YouTube can be a great resource for learning how to make repairs to your Corvette, but not always. Occasionally I'll watch repairs being made, even ones I've done many times before, just to see if someone else uses a method or trick that makes the job easier and or faster without sacrificing quality. Sometimes I end up learning something useful and sometimes I just cringe because I see a method being used that's not only a little bit wrong, it's 100% wrong. Check out the way this individual installs a harmonic balancer on a C6 Corvette with no regard given whatsoever to the proper torquing of the bolt that holds the balancer to the crankshaft. Many different ways to skin a cat on that one, but that's my preferred method, so. And just like that, the new harmonic balancer is installed. Rather than using any precision whatsoever, he goes ahead and uses a brand new GM harmonic balancer bolt, which is a good sign because at least he knows this is a one-time use torque to yield fastener, but then he makes the reckless decision of just cranking that sucker on with an electric impact gun. That means he really has no idea whatsoever just how tight this bolt is, and that's a horrible idea because the fit between the harmonic balancer and the crankshaft is an interference fit, and it relies heavily on the proper torque being applied to the harmonic balancer bolt, which is what stretches this bolt, and that provides the clamping force that holds the harmonic balancer to the end of the crankshaft, keeping it tight. If this bolt ended up too loose, then I promise you the harmonic balancer is eventually going to come loose and fall off the end of the crankshaft because it's constantly being exposed to twisting forces and all kinds of vibration. If the torque he applied to this bolt ended up being too much, then A, it could have stretched too much, which means its clamping force is not correct. And again, the harmonic balancer will probably fall off the crankshaft at some point down in the future. Or second, it could also damage the threads on the end of the bolt or inside the crankshaft, like this one that I discovered a few years ago while installing a new harmonic balancer on a very high mile C5 Z06. Guys, we hit our first snag. Here's the bolt that I pulled out, and they're not stripped, but they're, they're definitely funky. Now you guys know me, I normally don't go out of my way looking to rip on other YouTubers, but I wonder what he would tell the customer if they brought that C6 back six months later, complaining that the balancer fell off the crankshaft and destroyed the end of the crankshaft in the process. Now with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about an important tool that really needs to be in your toolbox. The torque wrench, it's used when you need to administer a certain amount of twisting force or torque to a bolt or a nut. Did you know that within the Corvette factory service manual, there are torque specs for virtually every single bolt and nut that's holding your Corvette together. When I was just a little kid souping up my BMX bikes, I certainly didn't know what a torque spec was and I surely didn't own a torque wrench. So it wasn't uncommon to see the threads on the wheel axles to be stripped out on my bikes or the threads inside the cranks where the pedals screw in because the tighter the better, right? The torque specs that you find in the factory service manual assume that the fasteners are clean, dry, free of rust, and free of oil. If Chevrolet wants you to use a little oil or thread locker or Loctite, they will specifically instruct you to do so. Many times when you torque the nut on the bolt or the stud, it actually stretches the fastener just a little bit, which is what provides the clamping force that holds the components together without the need for a lock washer or Loctite, kind of like the lug nuts on your wheels. Did you know that if you apply a little bit of oil to the threads on your bolt or stud and then apply the dry torque spec with a torque wrench to this nut, it actually turns quite a bit easier while, when it's under the load and that can actually pull too hard on the bolt or stud overstretching it, which could fatigue it, causing it to break over time, or it could cause too much clamping force on whatever is being held together and cause damage in that way as well. How many times in your life have you seen a wheel that's missing a lug nut because the wheel stud is completely broken off? 
Or have you ever seen someone with a flat tire, perhaps even you, that can't get the lug nuts off with a cheap factory wrench because the lug nuts are on too tight? Or perhaps you've seen someone who has actually had their lug nuts come loose and the wheel has completely separated from the car. All of these scenarios are typically caused by somebody who has skipped using the torque wrench and instead has saved a little bit of time with an impact gun and ultimately those lug nuts have ended up being a little bit lower or higher than the 100 foot pounds that are specified, at least in my service manual. People don't do this because they're trying to be mean or dangerous, they do this because they're trying to save a little bit of time and they think the impact gun will be good enough. And the fact is, sometimes it is good enough and sometimes it isn't. Truck and then rolling in front of a car, which then hits the tire and goes flying into the air. Moments later, we see that same tire come rolling back into view and hitting that same car. If you think using a torque wrench is overkill, think about this scenario for just a moment. A torque wrench is about 20 times more accurate than this scenario, where you're in a shop and a new tech yells to an older seasoned tech, how tight does that bolt need to be? Uh, Would we'll just tighten it till it's medium tight, or just tighten it until it's barely snug. Those are words that mean vastly different things to different people. And for very critical fasteners like the big bolt that clamps your harmonic balancer to the engine, the torque wrench by itself is not accurate enough. In this scenario, the torque spec is to tighten the main bolt to 37 pound feet, which is a very light but very repeatable number. And then using an angle gauge, you rotate that bolt an additional 140 degrees. This is much more accurate because the threads on the harmonic balancer bolt and inside of the crankshaft are very uniform and very well known. And by using the two-step process with the torque wrench and the angle gauge, it gives a much more precise result than cranking this bolt down to a very large number like 280 pound-feet as an example with a torque wrench ever could. So what I'm trying to say is if you own a Corvette and you do even just a little bit of work on your Corvette once in a while, like rotating the wheels, then you absolutely need a torque wrench or two in your toolbox. A torque wrench or two? Why not just one? The reason is because larger bolts require quite a bit of force, and so you want a longer, bigger torque wrench. This one's a half inch drive, so you're able to achieve the torque specs for these larger bolts without breaking a sweat. Smaller bolts require a lot less torque to tighten, and if you over tighten them, it's very easy to snap these off, so you want a smaller torque wrench. This one is a 3 8 inch drive ratchet, and this is super important. It's denominated in pound inches, instead of pound feet like these larger ones and pound to inches is the unit of measurement you're typically going to be using with smaller bolts. I prefer the click type torque wrenches like this one and you adjust the torque setting right here on the handle. There's also the beam style of torque wrench and there's a digital torque wrench as well. I'll be sure to leave links in the description below to a couple of good torque wrench options and an angle gauge as well in case you decide to pull the trigger. Both of my torque wrenches are made by Craftsman and I've had them for over 30 years. Now, even though I take good care of them and I loosen them back down to zero after every use, it is possible every once in a while for them to become uncalibrated. So every couple of years I do check them to make sure they're still calibrated correctly and adjust them if need be. Now that sounds kind of hard, but actually it's quite easy. And here's how I go about doing that. The way we're going to make sure that it's accurate, I've got a large half inch drive socket clamped in my vise so it won't move. And I'm gonna stick the torque wrench in the vise. And what I've done is, so one foot pound is how much energy, one pound of weight, one foot away from the center line will produce. In this case, what I've done to make it easy, the handle where you have to push for this to be accurate, from the center of the rotating mass to that line is 18 inches or basically one and a half feet. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the known weight of 25 pounds and we're gonna hang it at the 18 inch mark times, so 18 inches is one and a half feet. 25 pounds becomes 37 and a half foot pounds is what 
should be the uh, amount of force applied at 18 inches. So as I hang this weight at the 18 inch mark, it should not click, and it does. So that tells me, or it does kind of easily actually, so that tells me that this torque wrench is out of spec. So I'm going to remove the end cap here and make an adjustment and see if we can't get this closer. So guys, at the end of the torque wrench here, this cap just pries off. We use a ratchet while you're holding the handle to loosen up this bolt in the middle. And then with a the slotted screwdriver while I'm holding this handle, I just made my adjustments. It was a little trial and error to uh, keep trying each way inside and out. Okay guys, so we've made our adjustments inside the handle. Uh, it took a little trial and error, and now we're hanging the weight again. At 18 inches, it doesn't click until I add about probably three ounces with my little finger. That's about as close as we're gonna get it. I would argue close enough for any automotive application. If you're building a jet engine for a 757, that might require a little more accuracy. When you're done, you want to make sure you lock this lock bolt back down by holding the handle and cinching the outer nut with a wrench. And uh, that's it. Put the cap back on when you're all finished. That's a wrap on this video. I hope you learned something today, a very quick way to make sure that your bolts are torqued properly by having an accurate torque wrench. If you like the video, please remember to hit thumbs up and to subscribe. Thanks for watching.